An amazing way to get hands-on practical cybersecurity skills is through the platform Try Hack Me. Now, you may have heard of Try Hack Me because a lot of people in the industry talk about it, but you might feel a little bit overwhelmed or intimidated getting started with it, perhaps thinking it's above you or over your head or you're not technical enough. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how you can go from not using the platform at all to using it and actually getting value and developing those practical hands-on skills. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, you know, we, we regularly talk in the community and on this channel of getting hands-on skills and you always hear hack the box and try hack me. Uh, people put it in their LinkedIn profile of what uh, what rank they are on Try Hack Me, what percentage they're on. Some people have even advised putting it on your resume as kind of a talking point. But if you're not, you know, in the industry or you're you're really uh, confused about how to get started, you might feel intimidated uh, and just kind of dismiss it and say, I need to get more, you know, fundamental skills before I get into this. I want to tell you that Try Hack Me doesn't have to be intimidating. And I'm really, really excited to kind of explore a fun way to learn cybersecurity today. Now, really quick, I'm Jerry Osier. This is Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further, faster. And on this channel, we do talk to experts in the industry and we do technical labs just like the Try Hack Me one today. So if that's interesting to you, check out some of the other content on the channel. We've got a ton of videos in the catalog and there's got to be something in there that resonates with you. So Try Hack Me is a web-based, you know, browser interacted uh, platform and th there's more to it, but this is how you kind of initially set up. So when you go to tryhackme.com, you'll be presented with this easy to follow registration process. You just drop in your email address here. It'll send you to a, um, a page where you kind of uh, put in a username and password. You kind of create an account, basic standard stuff. Um, what's really, really cool is they actually hit you with this right away as part of their onboarding experience and ask you what level you are, beginner, early, intermediate, intermediate, advanced. So they've already thought through um, the different kind of, you know, individual situations that would be coming to try hack me. So again, if you're not, you know, an IT background person or you're just pivoting into the industry, you know, feel free to take advantage of that beginner one. So I'm going to click beginner just, um, t you know, as for, for this uh, walkthrough, you know, so we can all kind of feel it together. Um, why are you learning cybersecurity? Great question. So they're starting to get some information. Um, I want to see if cyber is right for me, right? It's a reasonable question. Here we go. Welcome to Try Hack Me. There we go. All right, we're going to say we don't have any experience, okay? And look at this. They set you right up with 15 lab, 40 hours. By the way, I have paid $0 at this point. Um, and they're going to kind of walk you through and show you what's going on. Now, clicking on the pre-security one, you can come in here. It talks about the learning path, teaching you the prerequisites. So, again, this is, this is most excellent, okay? Learning schedule, they tell you how long you should expect to take. Um, so you can kind of map out your curriculum and understand, like, when you're going to, um, if you're going to carve out a certain amount of time each day to do this, when you could expect to be done with this work. Uh, which is just awesome, right? So four hours per week. Let's bump it out to eight, uh, seven hours a week. We're going to do one hour a day. And we'll be done here in February, right? Which is just a few months away. So completely realistic expectations that they're helping set for you. So now, like Try Hack Me, the, the beautiful thing is you interface with this thing through a web browser. But when you're starting to like hack machines and pop boxes and learn those practical skills, it, it, it's less through a web base portal and more through like directly connecting to a machine very similar to hack the box if you're familiar with that platform but what is excellent here is that they have the learning component and then they have competition so you can have like that community driven spirit scores etc etc okay, so the very first thing that they're doing here step one task one is hacking a vulnerable social media website that's kind of like uh, facebook so you know, you can see right away they jump right into a practical skills thing. There isn't a ton of like, read this, you know, eight chapter book first and kind of ground yourself in the theory. It's no, like, let's get in right away and hit the hit the ground running, right? So they got two questions here. This is another kind of standard uh, practice where they, um, you, you basically cap capture flags, right? That's, that's kind of what this is called. So we're going to go ahead and click view site. Again, part of this will be web-based interaction, and part of it will be accessing machines themselves. So you're an ethical hacker, and your job is to test for security vulns. Let's look. 
at the user account, okay? If you notice the URL, it's showing the profile's username, Ben Spring. Put in Ben's name, right? Reset password. Right, so this is great. So it sent the code, but we don't have access to the code. So thinking through the attack chain here, right? Click me to break down the web request. I just want to point out, like, this is this is excellent, right? So we're jumping right in right away. It's it's walking us through and helping us understand exactly what is going on. Like everybody's familiar with like using a website, right? And 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 doing password resets. These are things we have done, but now they're allowing us to kind of take something familiar to us and go one step deeper uh, to understand like why that web request is going and. You know, it's really a simple use case, and I, I find it quite quite nice. We've reset the password. Very nice. And that's the end of this lesson, okay? As is common with these things, once we've completed the, the lesson, we go back and answer the questions uh, just to kind of reinforce our education and understanding of the, um, the, the objective of the assignment, right? All right, so we've completed that, and then we could go on to the second task and rinse and repeat. I want to show you um, the... Um, the, the systems that you can connect to, right? Also, they call them rooms, right? Complete rooms. Uh, rooms are basically um, configured boxes, systems, right? Like a, like a Windows box, a Linux box, a web server box, right? Um, and they're configured intentionally with certain weaknesses or vulnerabilities for you to exploit and understand the concepts, right? And there's different levels of difficulty. Again, they have the pathways here. If you want structured learning, if you would prefer um, kind of a tailored curriculum, which I would recommend if you are new to the industry. Okay, so we got a VPN here. That's fine. Servers up. We're not connected, obviously. So real quick, very much like hack the box. In order to get into these rooms you have to get on try hack me's network right and you're going to use a vpn to do that all it means is your computer is going to have an ip address on the try hack me's internal network right this keeps the boxes that are set up to be vulnerable from being attacked by anyone on the internet right even though you, you can be anyone on the internet and get to them it's just a private network that's what vpn stands for virtual private network that allows them to kind of control who can access it and, and whatnot, right? So very standard practice. Like I said, Hack the Box does the same thing. All right, here we go. So we're gonna download um, a configuration file with this green button right here. So you can connect through OpenVPN or a Kali Box in the browser, so this is great. Now this is one of those upsell things, right? So if you wanna just work through the browser exclusively, uh, meaning you don't have to set up anything technical on your end, you can pay the $10 a month and get that access. Um, but if you want to just do the free one, which we're going to do today, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up that VPN. You you know don't need to do that. Plus, it's great because you get access to your own tool sets and your own familiarity, right? Let, let's uh, do the whole thing then. Ready? We've already downloaded the OpenVPN. Okay, so this is just this configuration profile. So we've already got that. Then we're going to download OpenVPN for Mac OS. All right, so we're going to run this. We're going to run the application walk through the uh, wizard. So now that we've run the installation, it takes a few minutes. We have a open VPN um, icon across the top. No, P no VPN service found. I've got the import from local. There's my VPN profile. I'm opening. When you click on it after you import the file, you can see now that we have that IP address. This is the try hack me server. Uh, at least it's our termination point for the VPN. So we're going to go and click connect. You'll see um, disconnect from this, right? So meaning that we're on there. So like, let's check out our IP address again. There's a 10 dot um, network down here, which is non-publicly routable. So now we're on the network, okay? Okay, guys, so very simply, we have downloaded the OpenVPN configuration file, which is basically your username dot OVPN. We downloaded the OpenVPN application um, and I, like I said for Windows Linux and Mac there's the instructions are perfect we then imported the OpenVPN configuration file into the OpenVPN application and then we connected to the OpenVPN and you should have all indications that you are connected but one of the cool things is you could see here it says not connected but when we refresh you'll see that it is connected right so this this means that we're on the network correctly and this is our IP address, right? So now we can connect to the rooms or to the servers in order to actually do some hacking and some fun stuff, okay? I'm just gonna jump to the Linux one. So you can see start attack box. 
So this is great. So now look, they've got a YouTube video. Let me let me just point out the whole point of Try Hack Me here. It's not just a platform for you to attack and be like elite hacker guy, right? Or hacker woman, right? It's it's much more a, a platform for education, learning, both theory and practical hands-on based skills. And this is what is so cool about it. So they've, yes, they've got the box for you to attack, but then they've got these videos, they've got the readings that really outline what you're doing and why you're doing it. So like the skills actually have, you know, kind of stickiness to them, right? So you can start the machine. You do not need to be on the VPN in order to do this, okay? This is in the browser. Okay guys, so the Linux box has been booted up in the browser. I am in my Chrome browser right now, but you can see this is like a full Linux box, right? So when you're done with this, you'll, you'll have some familiarity with Linux and you'll understand how they can pop a, um, machine into your browser. But what I really want to show you fi the final step here is how to like connect into a machine. So as you can see, they have it set up with learn, learning paths, like your more traditional kind of classroom, you know, walk through, learn, experience, get education, and then applying those hands-on skills. So they, it's really, really nicely done. And they have it by uh, difficulty, right? So they have easy, medium, uh, insane, which I guess would be harder than hard. Um, you know, we could just click on easy just so you can not be uh, blown away right off the rip. They'll show you these different tools, right? Nmap, Metasploit, standard in the industry. Some of these other tools, you have to have the paid version uh, like Burp Suite, which is, you know, quite popular web proxy tool. I clicked on Nmap, quote unquote, start the machine. We are connected to the VPN. They actually keep you from doing it. They like force you to like spend time reading before you get in here. Okay, so here's the IP address. This is the machine that we're gonna hit, okay? You can see we are successfully scanning the machine and, you know, with with Nmap, uh, and you can see that it's got RDP open. So, you know, high probability this is a Windows box that we're scanning. Port 80, which is a web server, which means we should probably try to connect in on in a web browser. Yep, so IIS is running. Um, as you can see, if you just follow um, the tutorial walkthrough, you'll get experience using Nmap. You're not actually compromising a box, but you get you get the idea, right? Like, basically, this platform is completely tailored and fully featured to give you practical hands-on experience and the theoretical kind of basic understanding of why these things are working, right? So you're not really like a a script kitty not understanding why nmap does something or understanding why you're able to elevate privileges or something like that you're actually getting the understanding now i do want to point out you know at the very beginning we did kind of like the little tutorial and it was like a facebook attack through a web application nmap we're like actually scanning a server directly and maybe we could try rdp and into the box and stuff like that um, and that's at the server level operating system level so you know, you can try, um, you can get a little taste of everything, but, you know, a lot of people in the industry may just focus on being a web app uh, pen tester or a Linux pen tester, or network pen tester, right? I mean, again, it's it's good to have all the clubs in your golf bag, but if you really want to be um, not spread wicket thin, you may want to kind of uh, focus your effort on one particular area and get comfortable with that before you start exploring others. They've gamified cybersecurity uh, education, which is just fantastic. There's a ton of resources here. Again, the free version of this platform is fully featured and sufficient enough to give anyone um, the education and the opportunity to learn. And then, you know, with the paid version, it becomes, you know, it's just, it's more about, you know, ease and time and stuff like that and, and access to some modules that you wouldn't necessarily have. Give Try Hack Me a chance. It's a great platform. It's well respected within the industry. By the way, if you're interested in how to set up a SIM and, uh, you know, like actual attack data, set up a honeypot, learn about that, check out this video right here. I watched it the other night. It's absolutely fantastic. I love the work this guy is doing. Uh, and if you're interested more in, go, you know, going hack the box, check out this video over here where I show you how to set up hack the box, which is a comparative tool to Try Hack Me. All right, y'all. Until next time, stay secure.